So right now, yeah. uh, there's somebody who um, has a story. Yes, sir. Uh, but they they have a fear. They still have a fear yeah. of you know of, of of putting their story out there. What advice would you have to some to, to someone like that who is obviously here for a reason because they've overcome this adversity, but they're not comfortable sharing their story yet? Yeah, don't be selfish with your experiences. Oh. Right? Don't be selfish with them yeah. because oftentimes when we go through things or we overcome things. We think that experience is just for us. Yeah. And so oftentimes we don't share it, right? And that's cool, yeah. right? If you're not there, because I always share with people, when you go through something, right, immediately don't try to understand it, mm. right? Because the first thing we do when we encounter something, we want to understand why it happened. Yeah. I got a paralyzed right on my hand, man. Why did this happen to me? Yeah. Why am I going through this? Don't try to understand it, just survive it, mm. right? And after you survive it and you get to a place of peace, right, then you go out and you share it. Don't be selfish with the experience. Because it's somebody dealing with a similar situation that needs to hear your story. Now, I'm not going to say go become a speaker, mm -hmm. right? But if you feel the need to share your story, share it and be great wherever you are. Whatever position you find yourself in, be great. But I can guarantee you the experiences that you've overcame is not just for you, yeah. right? My experience, I thought it was just about me, Ash. Yeah. But my arm led to my mother and my father talking again. Mm. They didn't really talk. Right? They would be in the same room. It would be like a Rockwell and a Chihuahua. You know what I'm saying? And my mom, the Rockwell, like she despised my man. Mm. And when my injury happened, and they didn't know if I was gonna live or die, they didn't know if they was gonna have to amputate my arm or keep it, it put my mother and father in the same room. Wow. Eliminated the foolishness. Yeah. My father looked at my mother and said, you did a great job raising ink. Wow. And my mother cried. In that moment, I knew it was a lot bigger than me. My buddies, who I went to college with, Cats start giving a life, like it, it was on another level, man. Yeah. And so we waste so many experiences, Ash, because we're so selfish and we think everything we encounter is about us. Yeah. What if you're the one that's strong enough to handle what you're dealing with and how dare you not share it? Wow. If it can help another person. Yeah. Hey, hey, wait, 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 wait. I know you want to watch this next video, but listen, if you are an entrepreneur, business coach, business consultant, or a small business owner who has a story and wants to learn how to create multiple streams of income from your story, I need you to text me right now, my book to 646-687-4152. That is my personal number. I have been an author for over 12 years. I've written 10 books. Four of them have been bestsellers, and I've sold over 100,000 books. But but I've also helped a lot of my clients take their expertise and put it into a story, then create multiple streams of income from that. So I wanna help you do the same thing. So text my book to 646-687-4152. All right, all right, let's go back to the video. Pay attention and listen, we about to teach class. Inside the boat, my man asked cash to get your man right. Thursday nights, 8 p.m. to see him change your life. Millionaire man set the best on earth. So welcome to another awesome episode of Inside the Vault with Ash Cash, the greatest money mindset show on the planet. Man, this gentleman who's next needs no introduction. When I tell you this is the greatest inspirational speaker on the planet, excluding nobody, we got my man Inky Johnson in the building. What's up, my brother? Man, I'm honored to be here. Man. Oh, man. I'm, I'm I mean, yo, let, 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 me, let, me, let me start. I don't even know how to start, right? Because... Um, I've been a fan of yours for a very long time. Like, you, you know, being being moved and inspired by you for years, um, and then um, you know having the opportunity. I mean, I think the, I think I think really having the first opportunity to kind of watch you do your thing. Shout out to Rashad and Troy. You no interviewed doubt. on Earn Your Leisure. No uh, I was in the building for that, and, no and was doubt. able to meet the legend nah. for the first time in person. I was like, yo, right. Nah. Then, you know, I started a radio station called Monright Radio, mm -hmm. uh, MonrightRadio.com. And, you know, we have a track that, you know, I, so we take inspirational tracks, we mix them in with, uh, you know, motivational speeches. Um, yeah. And for me, when I thought about Inky Johnson, I thought about Unstoppable, right? Mm. And so Big Sean has the, you know, I am yeah. unstoppable. So we were, oh, that's a good mix. So we take an Inky Johnson, you know, you know, inspirational mm -hmm. speech, mix it with I am unstoppable. And when I tell you, when I do my morning show every Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. and 9 a.m., 
your song is like the most request. Like, yo, play Inky Johnson. <laughs> I don't care how many, they want me to play it back to back. And it's I a 12 minute track. It. I tapped into it. That's yeah. how I tapped into it. Yeah, yeah. Because they was tagging me. Tagging and I was like, you. what's this? Yeah, they was going crazy. And then crazy. I tapped into it. It was dope, man. And then, man, I got to see the legend live. Mm. Mm. Yo, when I tell you, you know, yo, you cold, man. And when, I, and, and, and when I and when I and the reason why I say that why I say you're the greatest inspirational speaker, you I mean that 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 doesn't even in, encapsulate who you are, right? But when I say you're the greatest inspirational speaker on the planet, because um, I love how you're able to take everyday situations that people would normally kind of dismiss. Absolutely. And be able to see the lesson in it, right? And Absolutely. and so you know, I Inky Johnson you just now, right? When we <laughs> behind the scenes, uh, because I, you know, what I mean, I was playing basketball, yeah. and I and I and I, you know, I, I, I tore, I partially tore my Achilles, and you're like, oh, yo, what happened? I said, yo, you know, I, I partially tore my Achilles, you know, but God was telling me I'm carrying all this weight, <laughs> and that I gotta build my foundation. You know what I'm saying? Like that's yeah. like, I just no Inky Johnson you. No know what I'm saying? No so brother, I appreciate yeah. you, man, no, for man. all you do, it's man. All love. For, for those who who living under a rock, mm -hmm. who don't know who Inky Johnson is, who is Inky Johnson? Yeah, you know, I watch your show, man. I'm a fan, a fan of you, Thank what you. you do, how you do it. But most of the time, man, when you ask the average person, who are they, they tell you what they do, mm. right? But who I am, I'm a husband, I'm a father, yeah. I'm a servant, I'm a big brother, yeah. you know, and I'm, I'm a survivor, Ash, mm -hmm. right? I've yeah. been surviving my whole life, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, it's some in me mentally, it's some in my disposition, it's some in the way I attack life every single day. I'm just a cat from the east side of Atlanta that's not going to fold. Mm, you know yeah, what I'm saying? And yeah. I know that before I face the adversity, face the opposition, face the battle. It ain't nothing special about me, but I'm just a cat that ain't willing to fold. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I love and that. And I speak. Yeah, yeah, you right? Know, you know what I'm saying? But, but, but where, where does that come from? Where does that mindset come from? Because, yeah. I, like, I, I um, man, I think, I think one of the things that moved me the most, man, when I, when I think about you know, your background and where you come from. Um, and like you said, you know, all the adversity that you've, you, you, you've come to, um, you know, there's a, there's a, a, a special, right, mindset, or, or, or I won't use the word special, but there's a mindset that says, yo, regardless, no matter what, yeah. um, you know, I'm, I'm gonna persevere. Um, mm -hmm. You know, where does that mindset come from? Um, I would say, man, just my environment, yeah. right? I was, I was born to a mother at 16. Uh, she took me back to 125 Warren, two-bedroom home, 14 people, and I saw everything, yeah. right? By the time I was a teenager, I saw everything. Mm. I saw murder, I saw drugs, I saw rob, I saw everything, yeah. right? But the thing that I saw the most was I saw my mother get up every day and work a double shift and not make an excuse, mm. yeah. right? Yeah. While she was raising me, yeah. I saw her put me around the right type of people. Yeah. I saw if she couldn't get me the resources, she'll put me with people that she felt could get me the resources. And I just never saw her complain, yeah. right? And so if I'm riding in a beat up Buick Regal with my mother and she's making all the necessary sacrifices to put me in a proper position, it built a certain type of spirit and mindset in me that regardless of the situation, regardless of what I encounter, be grateful for it and figure out a way. Mm. And so my whole life, I've approached life that way, mm. right? Like I live my life the way that I live it, paralyzed right on my hand. Mm -hmm. And I just don't believe in excuses. I believe in being grateful and finding a seed of good and everything that we face and everything we go through. Yeah, yeah. No, I love that. I love that. And so, you know, you, you've been able to um, impact millions of lives, like, like millions of lives, sure. um, and then also allow that impact uh, to now, you know, coincide with the income, right? Because yes, you're one of um, the top paid inspirational speakers on the planet right sure. and was that was that your trajectory like mm -hmm. did you did you wake up one day and was like yo you know what man yo fash out the les brown be that's what i'm gonna do <laughs> i'm gonna be the new les brown oh, like did you wake man. up and nah. just say like that that's my trajectory no nah, i didn't man yeah. but props to les though <laughs> salute, you know salute. props to the godfather yeah, yeah, yeah. props to e yeah. you know eric thomas but um i looked at him as you know, those were the people that was doing it. And if I could just serve as an extension of what they're doing, but do it in my own way. Yeah. Like I never wanted to speak initially, mm -hmm. right? Like I was trying to do other things and people would come to me and say, hey man, you need to speak. Mm -hmm. I'm like, nah, I'm cool on that. Mm -hmm. Right, I'm trying to do this. I'm trying to create curriculums for the kids in my neighborhood. I was never trying to speak. And so once I started, 
I was at a point in my life as to where every other door had literally closed. Mm. Everything I had tried didn't work, mm. right? I'm talking about stuff that should have worked, yeah. didn't work. Mm. And so I was like, I guess this is it, yeah. right? Yeah. And I went in search of it, but I was already doing it. I had been doing it for years, yeah. but I wasn't looking at it in terms of speaking. Mm. I wasn't looking at it in terms of a career. Mm. I was looking at it in terms of, man, I'm just serving. I would go somewhere, somebody would see my arm, hey man, what happened? Mm. Football injury. Yeah. No, what happened? Mm. And I'll just start telling them what happened, not trying to speak about it. Yeah. I was just telling them the situation. And before I knew it, a crowd would come, people would come and say, man, you might need to look at doing that. Mm. And so when I made the decision to do it, Ash, I'm going to just be honest with you. I'm a real practical, basic person. I said, I just want to be obedient mm. to every opportunity I get, right? I want to be as great as possible with every opportunity I get. I want to approach it and give everything I got to it. However many minutes I'm going to be on the stage, I not only want to learn how to speak, I want to learn how to speak for 60 minutes, 90 minutes, 45 minutes, 30 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, 25 minutes, 13 minutes, 8 minutes, 5 minutes. Mm. I want to learn how to speak in every possible time frame and be just as powerful. Mm. If you say, ain't give me 45 minutes, mm. I'm going to give you 45. Mm. If you ask the average cat, give me 13 minutes, mm. they stuck, mm. right? Mm. I want to learn everything about it. Mm. I want to speak in eight minutes and then be just as powerful as 60. Mm. I want to learn everything about it. That's been my mindset my whole life. Yeah. But speaking to obedience, in the Bible it says obedience is better than sacrifice, mm. right? But the first thing we do as people, we judge the level of sacrifice without first being obedient, mm. right? What is it going to cost me? Mm. What do I have to give up, mm. right? What do I got to do? Mm -hmm. No, I'm just going to be obedient. Where you want me to speak? Mississippi? Yeah. Where you want me to speak? In the old folks' home? Mm. Where you want me to speak? Kids at a birthday party? Where you want me to speak? In education? Yeah. Where you want me to speak? In sports? Yeah. Right? And Kat said, Inc., why are you speaking to all these different people? Mm -hmm. Why don't you just speak to sports? You play sports. Mm -hmm. No, nah, I, mean, I want to be diverse in my communication. Yeah. Yeah. I want to be just as dynamic when I speak in education as I am in sports. I want to be just as dynamic. My number one source of business isn't even sports. Mm. My number one source of business is corporate. Mm. Right. It's not even sports. Yeah. Just because early on I didn't say no to any of those opportunities because I know they would push me out of my comfort zone and make me level up in terms of my communication and how I wanted to do what I was doing. No, I love that. And then yeah. so, you know, as a speaker, you know, um, was it, you know, was it immediate like, yo, I'm going to start speaking and I'm going to make, you know, I'm going to make five figures, six nah, figures. Nah. I'm going to have these million dollar deals. <laughs> was that was that like that out the gate? Was it? Nah. Yeah, yeah. Nah, it wasn't. You know, and, and the beauty of it, Ash, is I think we all know, like, the beauty is in the journey and the process and yeah. the struggle, right? Like, you, when you were in banking, right, and the level that you rose to, mm -hmm. right? I'm sure when you first started, you probably knew where you wanted to get to from an aspirational level, but the process of grinding and scrapping every single day to get there, that's where the beauty is. So when the money happens, it's just a byproduct of the service, the dedication, and the commitment that you put into it. Yeah. Like, I'm going to be real. I remember, Ash, I should be on the road, man, driving, like, all around the southeast, right? And at the time, I probably was making $750, $500, $1,200, wow. yeah. you know what I'm saying? And I would be riding, and I would see a billboard, mm. right? And there would be an apple on a billboard. And I'll just create a message, mm. right? I'll be riding, I'll see another billboard. It'll be kids playing with a basketball. I'll create a message, mm. right? I'm just driving, right? Yeah. And I remember I started calculating the miles on my truck, right? And I'll never forget saying the miles on my truck, right? I got to pass that with income, mm. right? And I remember when I was at 100,000 miles and I was like, all right, I'm cool. <laughs> remember yeah. I was at 200,000 miles and my truck went out about 300,000 miles. <laughs> My truck went out on me, right? Then I started doing a joint with Sky Miles, yeah. right? And then I just started looking at things differently yeah. in terms of if I wanted to get to a certain level in terms of payment structure, mm -hmm. my presentation skills had to change, yeah. right? My communication skills had to change. I had to figure out certain things. I had to have a different level of conversation. I remember speaking of basketball, right? You, talk, you talked about how you hurt yourself playing basketball. I remember being young, right? And I would get on the phone with a company and they would say, hey, Inc., we're thinking about booking you, right, bringing you in, want you to speak. And I'm so eager, right, at the time, I'm so eager and excited. Before they can even ask me the question about what you want to talk about, I'll just go. Mm -hmm. I'm going to talk about this. I'm going to do this. I can't wait to do this, yeah. right? And they'll be like, all right, cool, right? But nah, we weren't really looking for that. Or some would be like, great, mm -hmm. right? 
And I'll never forget, I was in a call with Eric Thomas, E.T., and we was in Michigan. And he looked at me, and we was in the back seat, and we was going to speak at the Jalen Rose Academy. And he looked at me, and he said, man, like, you remind me so much of me when I was young. Mm. He said, you just want to dunk, bro. Mm. He's like, you just want to come down fast, break, <laughs> go between the legs, <laughs> punch on him, right? right? He was like, hey, you got you to gotta develop that game. Mm. You got to back him down. Mm. You got to learn the fade away, yeah. right? You got to learn how to come off the pivot. You got to learn how to come from a triple threat. And what he was telling me was, in terms of communication, if you want to get to a certain level, you got to have different conversations, but also you got to learn how to navigate and maneuver in a different way when you're on that stage and you're presenting, yeah. right? They can hear it. Yeah. It's a difference in content from 5,000 to 50,000. Yeah. It's a different in content from 20,000 to 70,000. Yeah. It's a different in time frame, mm -hmm. right? Cat bring you in for 90 minutes, mm. that payment structure a little different, yeah. right? Yeah. And so trying to figure that out and learn that, but also embracing the process along, along the way and not losing this, Ash, this is the thing that's the most important to me. Because you can walk off a stage and cats can cheer for you in a room, yeah. and you can forget, yeah. right? They can put a big check in your book bag, and you can forget, mm -hmm. right? You see a kid in the airport and say, hey man, can I take a picture with you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, little man, I'll get to you in a minute. Yeah, yeah, you know what yeah, I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. I just did what I did. I got an ovation, right? And not forgetting the purpose of why I started doing what I was doing. Mm -hmm. Right? It yeah. wasn't just to acquire stuff. It wasn't a superficial materialistic. My first engagement, God blessed me to speak in Mississippi in a barn. Mm. I got a coffee mug. I didn't get a check. Right. You know what right. I'm saying? And right. so remembering that moment that when I get in a room with Chick-fil-A yeah. or get in a room with other people, never forgetting that purpose of why I do what I do yeah. every single day and what it's about. Yeah. Hey, how you guys doing? Hold on, hold on, don't press that button because that's what I do every time I'm looking at an ad that I don't want to see. This ad just happened to be life changing. I just happen to own one of the biggest home healthcare companies in the state of Georgia. I can help you create your own. Just to give you a little bit of insight, I send out registered nurses, LPNs, and CNAs to take care of people inside of the homes that cannot take care of their sales. But guess what? You don't have to have any medical background and you don't have to have any medical knowledge. So if you're wanting to change your life and you have a passion for actually taking care of people, then go ahead and sign up for Home Healthcare Blueprint. I'll see you guys later. No, I love that. And I think, I think one of the other things that I love about you, know, you and your message um, is that, you know, number one, um, you take on this sense of responsibility, right? Um, this sense of responsibility that, you know, I don't do this for me. I do this for the people I serve. I do this for my family. I do this for my mother. I do this for the people who, you know, like I owe, right? Like, exactly. like, like, like I actually owe. Um, and, and, and I remember, you know, hearing one of your speeches and getting goosebumps, right? Because, you know, for me, you know, as somebody who grew up in the project, single okay. parent home, who was able to raise to a certain level of success, you know, I never, you know, turned my back because I'm like, nah, it was my basketball coach, it was my mother's Man. praying, you know, to three in the morning when I ain't coming Man. home. It was all of these people that like poured into me that made me who I am today. So Absolutely. can you talk to us a little bit yeah. about that? You know, Ash, like, I told a cat a couple of weeks ago, uh, they were coming to interview me, some cats from Australia. And he was like, is there anybody else we should talk to? Uh -huh. I was like, yeah, man, if you don't mind, can you go talk to my youth league coach? Uh -huh. I was like, if you don't mind, can you talk to my eighth grade math teacher? Uh -huh. If you don't mind, can you talk to my coach that came when I was in the 12th grade at Krim High School on the east side of Atlanta? He believed in me, yeah. right? Because when we see people, when a cat see me out traveling the world, Oftentimes, people don't think about how many people's belief are behind the people that you see and you cheer and you like, mm -hmm. right? It's a lot of people's beliefs. It's a lot, a lot of people's prayers, right? Like for me personally, a lot of people helped me, ass, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? Like I was on the floor, man. I was sleeping on the floor, getting up, wearing a 2X t-shirt to school. I'm 135 pounds. Wow. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like me and my cousins getting put on the wall at breakfast because we trying to jump the line because we didn't eat the night before. Mm -hmm. Right? And a cat pulling me to the side saying, young brother, you got it. Yeah. And I'm like, I got it? Mm. Like, I'm in a two-barrel home with 14 people. Mm. He's like, no, nah, you got the juice, man. Mm. And I'm like, nah, I don't see it. Yeah. And he's like, no, nah, I'm going to show up every single day. Mm. I'm going to play you in a game of one-on-one -on -one basketball every single morning. I'm going to pray with you. Mm. I'm going to read you a proverb. Right? A coach driving down the street stops his truck, pays for me and my three younger cousins to play ball. We were playing in the street. We weren't playing organized sports. I had the dream. But when I had the dream, I was playing light pole to light pole.
Cat stopped this truck, got out. Now where your parents at? My mom at work, go in the house, get your guardian. I go get my uncle, hey man, I run a league, cross town. Bring him out, great opportunity. My uncle like, yeah, we can't do that right now. We can't spare that type of money. My man like, no, nah, I'll pay for it. Wow. Pay for me and my three younger cousins and my family. Only people that ended up, ended up going to college, me and my three younger cousins, right? We got robbed Christmas Eve one year. Mm -hmm. My mom ain't called no pastor. Mm -hmm. My mom ain't called no deacon. Mm -hmm. My mom called my little league coach. Mm -hmm. My man showed up yeah. with a brown bag like you'll get from a corner store with a brown bag. I'm sitting on the curb. I'm just chilling, right? I'm thinking about it. I had one pair of Nikes at the time. I'm thinking about it like, man, cat, like, got us, right? Mm -hmm. My man showed up with a little brown paper bag. I'll never forget it. He was like, Ink, I got the call late. That's all I can do. And there was drawers and socks. Mm -hmm. And I was like, my man showed up. Mm -hmm. It wasn't even about what was in the bag. Yeah. Like you came, right. right? You cared enough about me. You saw me enough to come. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like right. when my mom called, it's a lot of cats be talking, right? Mm -hmm. But when my mom called you, you didn't sit in the bed and say, oh man, that's a tough break. Mm -hmm. He was like, nah, all right, bet. I'm gonna be there. Yeah. And so for me, the way I live my life, I remember the sacrifices that others made. My mom, man. Yeah, yeah. My mom used to be in the park with me at night while everybody was gone. Yeah. Got car lights on the field. And so the reason I'm passionate and live my life the way that I do, even when I played the game, Ash, like, I'm not a big dude. Mm -hmm. What? I'm going to give you I'm gonna give you every bit of this 175. Mm -hmm. yeah, I'm going to yeah. give you, it's going to feel like 225, <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Because of the people that sacrificed and paved the way for me. Yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah. No, I love that. I love that. And so now, you know, as yeah. as a, you know, powerful inspirational speaker, um, you know, you know, what what has been uh the most or what is the most um uh uh important part of your job? Like what is it, you know, what 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 keeps you going, right? I know, mm -hmm. you know, you owe, right? And and Man. you wanna, you know, help you know, or you want to be able to, you, you know, give back to those who, who poured into you. Um, but what, 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 you know, what's the other thing that just keeps you going? You know, like that, that's like, listen, you know, I'm going to be obedient. I'm going to follow, you know, this calling that God put on my life. I feel, I feel unworthy to be honest, mm -hmm. right? It's mm -hmm. almost like, you know, when you come from a certain situation or circumstance, you know, you grow up in the hood or whatever the case may be and you feel survivor's remorse, mm. almost, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like when you come from a circumstance and you're the one that, like you make it to a certain level, yeah. and you know somebody that's, that heart is just as good as yours. Yeah. Somebody that had the desire just like you had it. And sometimes you might sit back and wonder like, man, like what was special about me? Like what made the creator cho choose me, right? And so even when I look at my career and what I've been able to do, I never imagined it, Ash. I never imagined I would have the life that I had. Yeah. I never imagined I would be traveling, speaking. I never looked at my life as anything special. Yeah. I never looked at my situation or circumstances as anything special. When I encountered my injury, I just looked at it as, man, you got to do what you got to do. You got to play the hand you dealt, like it's mm. the hand you always wanted, mm. right? But the thing that keeps me going is every single day I wake up, like I think about my life being spared. Mm. Like cats look at this injury, Ash, or cats say, Man, Ink had a football injury, right? He got injured playing football at the University of Tennessee. Mm. But what I heard was when I was in the emergency room and the head doctor ran back and said, we got to rush this kid back to emergency surgery. He's about to die. Wow. Everybody outside the doors didn't hear that. Yeah. They hear me say it, but they didn't hear it. Right. Right? Like if you hear, mm. man, this cat Ash is about to die. We got to rush him back right now. Yeah. And I'm like, what happened? Mm. He's like, you ruptured the subclavian artery in your chest. You're bleeding internally. Mm. And he like, we got to rush you back right now. Take the main vein out of your left leg, mm -hmm. plug it into your chest in order to save your life, mm -hmm. or you won't be here in the morning. Wow. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And the next morning, I wake up. Mm -hmm. I'm there. Yeah. I got six incisions down my left thigh, one across the left side of my neck, one across the right, twice through my right ribs, cut out my right pec, bottom of my armpit to the bottom of my hand, bandages from my neck to my knee. But I'm alive though, Ash. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, and so yeah, now yeah. my perspective is different. Yeah. So now when I speak, like. I view you like I view me. You yeah. just as necessary as I am, yeah. right? When we go out into the world, everything we do, we're just as necessary. Some young brother need to see you yeah. and how you do what you do the same way he needs to see me and how I got through what I got through. In the Bible, it says we are overcomers by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony, mm. right? We're overcomers by the blood of the, blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony, meaning that's why everybody has a story. Right. Yeah. 
Most cats don't share it, yeah. but if you sit down with the average cat, you say, man, tell me about your journey. Yeah. You go to a cat right now, downtown Atlanta, under a bridge, and you talk to a cat, and you be like, what happened? Yeah. How you get here? Yeah. And they tell you the story. Yeah. And it makes you look at life totally different. I went in a homeless shelter, Ash, and I got a whole group of people. I said, man, tell me what y'all thinking before we go in. Cat, drugs, irresponsible. We go in there, we sit down, and the first lady we talk to, she say, I'm in here, I'm running from domestic violence. Wow. This the only place I can go. I got a job. Uh, wow. This the only place I can go where he can't find me. And me and my daughter in here, and we working until I can get to a safe place. Wow. Bump into another man. We giving him something to eat. Brother, what happened? How you get in here? Man, I lost my family in the house fire. Uh, I got a job. Yeah. I'm in here just transitioning out. Yeah. We got back out of the shelter after we served, and we talked to the people. Everybody was in the circle like, bro, I didn't know. Yeah. I didn't look at it that way. Yeah. And so when I look at my life and speaking, every time I step on a stage, it's a level of reverence and respect yeah. that, man, God, you trusted me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you trusted me yeah. not to speak. Right. You trusted me with this. Yeah, 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 yeah. You trusted yeah. me and said, Inc., I know if I take your career mm -hmm. and paralyze you right on my hand, I can trust you with that level of adversity. Yeah. Go be great. Yeah. You trusted me. Yeah. And so I'm going to make good on what you trusted me with. Yeah. And I'm going to go out into the world and I'm going to put a dent in it. Yeah. Yeah. That, I mean, that, that's, that's so powerful because I think that, you know, that, that's one of the reasons why I started to do what I do, do because I felt like, man, you know, I got kicked out of school four times, man. First, first grade, who get kicked out in the first grade? I got kicked out in the first grade, fifth grade, that's ninth wild. grade, expelled in the 10th grade. But then by 24, I was a VP at a, at a, at a major bank, mm. right? By 31, I was a CEO of a credit union. So I said, you know, at one time, you know, you, sp you speak about survivor's remorse. At one time, I was ashamed to talk about my story, mm. right? Because I got, I got, a, I got a, one of my partners who just did nine years for attempt murder for shooting somebody in the face. And I'm sitting, uh, you know, at the, at the corporate boardroom and I'm like, yo, I'm not worthy. Mm. Like, how, like, how am I here? And he, and he and Sing Sing, Sing you know what I'm saying? Doing nine years for attempt murder, and we it's, it's, it's somebody I was with every single day of my life. Wow. And so I, I realized that there's a there's a cat right now who also grew up in a single family home, who single parent home, yeah. you know, who 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 needs that. Um, talk to us a little bit of, 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 about that, right? Because I, mm -hmm. I have this term uh, that I said, you know, I mean, we all know, re regardless of, of what your, your religious doctrine Absolutely. is, whether it's the Bible, the Quran, it Absolutely. talks, you're made in the image and likeness of God. Absolutely. Uh, and, and I, you know, I have a term where I say, I am, I am, I am God, little G, right? Mm. Greatness on display. Mm. Meaning that in order for you to, you know, be obedient and be able to, to, to help folks, you have to be able to display that greatness. Um, and so talk to me a little bit about, you know, you know, that, um, responsibility, you know, that, that you take, right? Cause I've heard Absolutely. you say this, this responsibility that, yo, you know, you know, I'm the cat from East, East Atlanta. Absolutely. I'm the cat, right. And, and I, you know, I need to be able to show, like, I'm not, I'm not doing this cause I don't need no cookie. No doubt. You know what no I'm saying? I, you know I, what like I'm is. checking into you a Hilton. I don't need no cookie. You know what it is? Yeah, 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 man. Yeah, I was yeah. raised that way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. how I was raised. Like, yeah. bro, you don't get no reward for doing what you're supposed to do. Yeah. Like, you don't get no reward for that. You're yeah. supposed to work hard. Yeah. Right? You get kids, you're supposed to take care of your kids. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Don't nobody need to pat you on your back for getting up, going to work every day. Yeah. That's how I was raised, yeah. right? When I watched my mother go to work, people say, man, you raising your son, your single mother? She's like, no, I'm supposed to go to work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? And so me and the responsibility that I take with everything I do, like, I take it serious, Ash, but I'm going to tell you a story, man. Like, when I was in high school, right, and Kat started to see that I had talent, Right. And prior to me arriving at this high school, it's the east side of Atlanta. It's Alonzo A. Krim. Now it's Phoenix Academy under Alonzo A. Krim. Mm -hmm. And they turn it into like an open campus. Mm -hmm. But at the time it was Atlanta Public School. Right. Prior to me going to that school, when I was in the eighth grade, cats started coming to me saying, hey, Inc., you got talent, man. Like you want to go to college. Right. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to go to college. Mm -hmm. They like uh, what high school are you going to? High school, five minutes away from my house. Eh? I'm talking about, I could walk to the school. Yeah. I'm going to Crim, mm. right? This is where my family went. Everybody I know around, this is where we go. They're like, nah, don't go to Crim. Mm. You ain't going to make it from there. You ain't going to go to college. Why yeah. would you go there? Yeah. They're like, listen, we got to play, ain't? Eh? Go to this school, play three years. They'll guarantee you a scholarship to the University of Georgia. Mm. Want to go to college, right? Mm. I'm like, yeah. they like, the play already laid out. Mm. Go do what you do. Yeah. 
I'm like, nah, I think I can make it from here. Mm. They like, man, quit playing. Go, go over here, get the scholarship. I, they got to my mother. I'm in a call with my mother one day at the stoplight in front of our school. My mom looks at me and said, ain't hey, you want to go to college? I said, yes, ma'am, I'm going to college. She said, what high school you want to go to? We in front of Krim. Mm. I was like, I want to go to Krim. She was like, nah, Inc., I can't play with your future. Mm. I'm going to transfer you. Mm. I'm like, please don't transfer me. Yeah. My dad comes into the picture. My dad like, nah, he going. Mm. He, he don't know what's good for him yet. Mm. We going to transfer him so he can make something out of himself. Get him over there. They send me to the school, Ash. Mm. Send me to the school. I go every single day and I sit in front of the school with the police. Mm. Police sit out front, I sit out front. Mm. My man like, man, won't you go to class? I'm like, no disrespect, I don't want to be here. Mm. He like, but man, you got it. They talk about you play ball. I go to class so you can play ball. I'm like, I don't want to be here. Yeah. He was like, I gotta take you to the principal's office. Take me to the principal's office. Principal office like, man, you got all Fs. Mm. Ain't nobody gonna take you. Yeah. I'm like, Kramer take me. <laughs> He's like, nah, ain't nobody gonna take you. I yeah. said, call him. Right. He yeah. calls him, mm -hmm. talks to the principal. I got this kid, Inky Johnson here. Cause this is my sophomore year. He said, I got this kid, Inky Johnson here. Got straight Fs. Principal says, send him back. <laughs> right? So That's funny. our guy, yeah, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. I go back, yeah, Ash, yeah, right? I yeah. go back to the school. Yeah. I go to college. Mm. I get a scholarship. Yeah. D1, boom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Senior year, scholarship. Yeah. Everybody came to me and said, why did you want to go back to this school so bad? Yeah. I could have went across town, got a scholarship, going on to college, played ball, been on my way. Yeah. I had three cousins had to go to that same school, man. Yeah. That I had to come back to the same household and sleep on the floor with, Ash? Yeah. Ain't talking about sleeping in a bed. Right. Like, bro, I saw rats and roaches when I was a kid. Yeah. They running across the counter, heater. I got to sleep on the floor with them yeah. every day. So how am I going to go across town, go to a school, go to college, Come back to that same two-bedroom house with 14 people, sleep on the floor with them and say, hey, man, y'all do what y'all got to do. Mm. You know what they going to say to me? Yeah. Man, you went across town, eh? Yeah, yeah. Your words void, bro. Mm. That don't mean nothing to me. Yeah. You know what my neighbor going to say when I walk out the door and say, hey, bro, you can do it. Mm. Bro, you went across town. Mm. Talk that over there. Yeah. Your word void. It yeah. don't mean nothing in Kirkwood. Yeah. Your word don't mean nothing in Zone 6. Yeah. I wanted to make it from the same streets. Mm. They had to travel yeah. from the same place. They had to travel, same school they had to travel. Yeah. And so my responsibility comes from, I've always took the harder route, eh? Mm, yeah. Always. Yeah, yeah. I'm built for it, yeah. right? Because of the sacrifices that made me who I am as a man. Yeah. I'm going to always carry that with me yeah. every single day for the rest of my life. Whew, man, that's powerful. Yeah. That's powerful. So right now, yeah. uh, there's somebody who um, has a story. Yes, sir. They've overcome adversity. Like yes, they are here. They're here for a reason. You just ignited them. You you've shown them that you know you can take your your, your test and become you know you know create that into your testimony. Uh, but they they have a fear. They still have a fear yeah. of you know of, of of putting their story out there. Um, they don't believe uh, that anybody would listen to them and you know want to hear what they say. What advice would you have to some to, to someone like that who is obviously here for a reason because they've overcome this adversity, but they're not comfortable sharing their story yet? Yeah, don't be selfish with your experiences. Oh. Right? Don't be selfish with them yeah. because oftentimes when we go through things or we overcome things. We think that experience is just for us. Yeah. And so oftentimes we don't share it, right? And that's cool, yeah. right? If you're not there, because I always share with people, when you go through something, right, immediately don't try to understand it, mm. right? Because the first thing we do when we encounter something, we want to understand why it happened. Yeah. I got a paralyzed right on my hand, man. Why did this happen to me? Yeah. Why am I going through this? Don't try to understand it, just survive it, mm. right? And after you survive it and you get to a place of peace, right, then you go out and you share it. Don't be selfish with the experience. Because it's somebody dealing with a similar situation that needs to hear your story. Now, I'm not going to say go become a speaker, mm -hmm. right? But if you feel the need to share your story, share it and be great wherever you are. Whatever position you find yourself in, be great. But I can guarantee you the experiences that you've overcame is not just for you, yeah. right? My experience, I thought it was just about me, Ash. Yeah. But my arm led to my mother and my father talking again. Mm. They didn't really talk. Right? They would be in the same room. It would be like a Rockwell and a Chihuahua. You know what I'm saying? And my mom, the Rockwell, like she despised my man. Mm. And when my injury happened and they didn't know if I was going to live or die, they didn't know if they was going to have to amputate my arm or keep it. 
It put my mother and father in the same room. Wow. Eliminated the foolishness. Yeah. My father looked at my mother and said, you did a great job raising ink. Wow. And my mother cried. In that moment, I knew it was a lot bigger than me. My yeah. buddies who I went to college with, cats started giving their life, like it, it was on another level, yeah. man. Yeah. Yeah. Like cats around me changed, yeah. right? Yeah. I talked to my uncle in prison. Mm. My man, like I'm talking to him two weeks ago. Mm. He calling cats from the back. He on the cell phone, on FaceTime, calling cats. Hey, this ink right yeah, here. Yeah, yeah, you know that yeah, speech yeah. I had you watch the other day? Oh, and I, I'm talking to yeah, him. And my yeah. man like, hey, man, like, I appreciate that. Right? Imagine if I never would have shared it. Yeah. And so we waste so many experiences, Ash, because we're so selfish and we think everything we encounter is about us. Yeah. What if you're just strong enough to handle it? Mm. And it can change the people that's around you. Yeah. What if you're just strong enough to deal with it? And it can change the people. I know a cat in prison right now that spent over half his life in prison. One of the best people I've ever known, heart of gold, right? I never would have thought if you would have asked me, Ash, if I would have thought that he would have been in prison. Mm. Brothers, his brothers, mm. grimy, mm. Grime, sharks, do anything. Yeah. He said, ain't, they weren't strong enough to handle this. Wow. He said, the creator knew I was strong enough to handle it. He got put behind bars cleaning up a situation for his brother. Mm. He didn't do it. He was cleaning it up. Mm. But he done spent half of his life in prison mm. because he was strong enough to handle it. What if you the one that's strong enough to handle what you're dealing with and how dare you not share it? Wow. If it can help another person. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. I love that. I love that. Um, and so talk to us a little bit about. Um, you know, you know, as a successful speaker, you know, coming from, you know, East Atlanta, the Absolutely. hood, roaches and rats, I, two bedroom apartment, 14 <laughs> people yeah. like that's, you know, a sight. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and then growing up, you know, a lot of us who come from that environment are not really taught about money, you know. Absolutely. Um, and then we get to a level um, of financial abundance um, and we like. Mm, I heard this about money, but that ain't really true. Mm -hmm. um, talk to us about any money myths that you might have kind of heard growing up, but now mm -hmm. you know you're in a situation where you have financial abundance. You know, mm -hmm. you know, you know, dispel some of the, some of those money myths. Yeah, I would say the biggest one, Ash, and you know, as cliche as it sounds, I think it's true that money can buy happiness or bring happiness, mm. right? Because when you struggle, you think, man, money gonna cure everything. Yeah. That's just not true, yeah. right? You can have money and still not be happy, yeah. right? And so for me, it was about not only being a good steward of what I was blessed with, but also understanding that that whole thing of renewable and non-renewable, mm -hmm. right? The moment I, I was able to discern, all right, time is non-renewable. Mm -hmm. Money is renewable. Mm -hmm. I can make more of that. Yeah. Time, if I miss a birthday, my son will never be eight again, yeah. right? If I miss my daughter's 10th birth, she'll never be 10 again. Yeah. Right. And so starting to understand and realize that because I came out the gate and I was just running as yeah. I'll never forget, man. I come out the gate. Like you said, I know anything about money. All I knew was I didn't want my family to experience what I experienced. Mm -hmm. And so when I started getting paid to speak, yeah, I'm serving. But also every opportunity I get, I'm running. I'm speaking. Mm -hmm. Right now. Never forget. I was at a small group and a gentleman was going around a circle and he said, Everybody tell me something that you're running from, mm -hmm. from when you're young, right? Cats going around, sir, I'm running from this, I'm running from this. He gets to me and I say, I'm running from poverty. Mm. He's like, are you in poverty? I was like, nah. He was like, stop running. Mm. And he went to the next dude, you know what I'm saying? And it was simple, right? <laughs> right. But when I got to my room, I thought about it, yeah. you know, and it made me assess my values, my principles and my decision making. Yeah. Right. And what was I making decisions and choices from? Yeah. Right. Was it from a place of peace? Mm. Was it from a place of what's best for my family? Yeah. Or was it from a place of I'm just running from poverty yeah. and I'm going to destroy everything. Yeah. First engagement I got to speak in the NFL with the organization, the NFL. Mm -hmm. This was when I first got in the NFL mm -hmm. and I'll never forget. They offered me some crazy to pay me. Right. And I'll never forget Ash. I'm like, man, sweet. Yeah. I'm finna be in the NFL. It's yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? They had a list yeah. at the time. A list. I don't know if they still got it or not. They had a list of guys, right? And a cat told me about this list. Because mm. I'm like, man, I should have been spoke to the NFL. Yeah, yeah, he was yeah. like, no, nah, they got a list, yeah, right? Yeah. And so I get the offer, right? And I'm like, ooh, I ain't never got paid that before. Yeah. So they send me the date. They send me the date after they send the offer. 
The date is my wife's birthday. Oh. Right? So I'm like, oh man. I'm like, how can I make this work? Yeah. Me and my wife been at it since fifth grade. Yeah. I tell my wife, I'm like, babe, what you think? You think I could send you to the spa with grandma early in the day? You know, I can go make this happen. <laughs> right. And I can double back, you know, by mid-afternoon and we can go celebrate. Yeah. She like, yeah, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Right? I should have known. Right. I, well, yeah, I didn't yeah. peep it. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm like, all right, cool. I go up, I speak my butt off, right? <laughs> speak my butt off, I get back, take out for a birthday, we party. The next day, it was something simple. And my wife clicked. Mm. And immediately, I got it. Yeah. I said, she didn't feel like you valued yeah. her birthday. You valued the NFL yeah. more than you valued her birthday. Yeah. You put you breaking into an industry and whatever they was paying you more than her birthday. Yeah. She told you to go because she loves you. Yeah. That didn't mean that she wanted you to go, yeah. but you were so caught up on what you wanted to do and get to a certain level yeah. and thinking money was going to bring something yeah. that you missed a moment. Mm. And so for me, one of the myths was, man, money bring happiness. Yeah. It yeah. doesn't. Yeah. Right? I'm chasing fulfillment. Mm. Mm. Yeah. I love that. And that was a powerful story. And I hope I hope y'all caught that because that was powerful. Um, and so, you know, being, you know, financially abundant, um, you know, a lot of people, you know, as soon as they, you know, like uh, athletes, they, you know, yeah. they get their first check, they yeah. buy their crew the houses, yeah. the cost. You know, what uh, would you say? is the most lavish thing that you've done with money? Man, and like, you know, if I could be honest with you, Ash, like, and it's hard, right? Like at first when you make a little money or just seeing my boys that came into the league to be like, hey man, be financially literate, yeah. be financially disciplined, do what you gotta do with your money, it's hard, right? And so the, the first thing that I would say that I did, that after I did it, when I got back, I was like, whoa, when I got the check, like I took like 15 people um, to Hawaii, mm. right? And we went and it was all expense paid, yeah. right? And we just, we killing it. Yeah. And they got time to check out and they brought me that check and everybody else laughing. They, oh man, we in Hawaii. They brought me the check, I was hurt. As I got back on that plane going back, I was hurt, yeah. right? We got back to the parking deck in Atlanta, right? I'm talking all expense, right, right. I done told cats, I'm going to pay for your parking when we get back. Everything. We get back to the parking deck in Atlanta airport. I'm like, I'm out. <laughs> cats hit me up like, hey, you ain't got our parking. I'm like, no, I'm out of here, right? I'm hot. Yeah. But I learned from it, man. And, you know, it was a great learning experience and everybody had a great time. But I, I had to get it out of my system and I had to do it for my people. Yeah. But now I do it a little bit different, yeah. whether it's with reward points, mm -hmm. things of that nature. When I travel with Sky Miles, things of that nature, yeah. I figure out a way to finesse the situation yeah. and don't just go cash out on it yeah. and let everybody ball, you know what I'm saying? But that was one of the things that I was like, yeah, I'm going to learn from that. Oh, I love that. And, then, and then, you know, to that vein, like what is the most impactful thing you believe that you've done with money so mm -hmm. far? got connected to the right group of people mm. uh, in my mid-20s. Um, yeah. I got connected to some people that already had money, yeah. uh, that knew about taxes, yeah. uh, that knew about business, yeah. that was years ahead of me, yeah. that had been doing it for a long time. And I'm going to be honest, a lot of the things they told me early on was uncomfortable, mm -hmm. and I didn't want to do it, mm -hmm. but I trusted them enough and I respected them enough to do it, and it put my family in a great situation. But I would say that network and just being around the right people. Mm. You know, you hear early on who you hang around is who you become. Yeah. Who you run with determines the direction that you run. Yeah. And early on, I got connected with a good group of people yeah. that have been doing it the right way for a long time. And they put me on game and it changed my life. Yeah, yeah. I love that. I love that. All right, so we're going to do our lightning round. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and when we do in the lightning round, we take, uh, you know, bank terms and we flip them, yes, right? Sir. Uh, and so the first term we're going to use is deposit slip. Mm -hmm. uh, deposit slip, you know, you go to the bank, uh, you, you know, fill out the slip, you put some money in there. For us inside the vault, deposit slip uh, is a money mistake, right? Mm. It's a slip up, right? Yeah. Uh, so tell us the, the biggest deposit slip that you've made so far in your journey. No, uh, the biggest deposit slip that I made so far in my journey, um, when I first went to get a house, and you know, I made my income, but I was writing everything off. Mm. I, I was talking about Ash, I'm writing everything mm. yeah, off, yeah, right? Yeah. And when I went 
to try to make the transaction happen. I had written so much, so much stuff off, my debt to income ratio was too low, and I let my family down. Mm. I had told my wife we was gonna get a house on this date. Yeah. It was supposed to be a surprise for her, yeah. but I had written so much stuff off. And one could look at it on the flip side and say, man, that was pretty smart. You're writing stuff off, mm -hmm. you're able to save. Mm -hmm. But it was the moment that I was trying to accomplish for my wife and my children. Yeah. And it was a big moment, it was our first home, yeah. right? But I had written so much stuff off yeah. that I wasn't able to get it. And I had to wait a little moment before I was able to get it. But I would say early on, just figuring out all of that, man, yeah. taxes, income, debt to income ratio, things of that nature in business, you know, so I could put myself in the right situation for my family to be able to do certain things in life. No, I yeah. love that. I love that. And that's a great, you know, uh, testament because a lot of entrepreneurs feel like I'm going to write everything all yeah. so I can save on taxes. Absolutely. But look, when it comes to trying to make things happen with credit, it's yeah. going to, it might backfire. So you got to know the right strategy to use. So I love Absolutely. that. All right. Second term, charge off. Mm -hmm. You go to the bank. You borrow money, you don't give it back, they charge it off. But for us inside the vault, charge off is what type of mindset or people did you have to charge off on your journey? Um, pessimistic people. Mm, yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. Like people that, that don't believe, people that are negative. Yeah. Right? Like, I don't like being around negative people. Yeah. Like people that are just look at a situation, that ain't going to work. Mm. You can't do that. Yeah. You don't come from that. Yeah. You can't accomplish that. Yeah. Like not being around people because if you're not careful, their belief will bleed into you. Yeah. Right? If you're not careful, they'll make you second guess your abilities and what you can accomplish. Yeah. If you're not careful, they'll have you stepping back on your dreams, your goals, and your aspirations. And so when I when I first got to high school, Cat told me, I said, I'm gonna I'm gonna go to uh, D1. Cat said, You're gonna go to sale block D1. Oh, wow. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, like to me, it was just reverse. I reverse engineered it. Yeah. I used it as motivation. And so being around pessimistic people is something that I've had to charge off in my life because of my circumstances. Because yeah, yeah. somebody would look at your circumstances and say, you come from this, you can't accomplish that. And I had to charge those people off in my life so I can accomplish certain things. No, I love it, love it. Last but not least, uh, trust account. Mm -hmm. Right. Trust account is where you take all your valuable assets, you put it, you protect it. It helps you grow. Uh, what type of mindset do you have in your trust account that you are protecting that helps you grow? Gratitude. Mm -hmm. as, uh, gratitude yeah. is is king for me. Right. Finding a way to be grateful for all things. Right. Like no matter how bad we may think they are, no matter how inconvenient it may be, no matter how uncertain it may be. Finding a way to be grateful for all things because all things work to our advancement as people. Yeah. Right. And so every single day getting up and being grateful in advance. Right. Yeah. And one would say, yeah. how can you have gratitude in advance for something that hasn't even happened yet? Yeah. That's the whole disposition and mindset of gratitude. Yeah. If I could be grateful before it even shows up, I can get the lesson from it. Yeah. If I can get the lesson from it, I can beat it. Yeah. Right. And so every single day figuring out ways to be grateful for all things, yeah. right? The things that I want, the things that I don't want, finding a way to be grateful in advance, mm -hmm. Ash, before it even shows up, yeah, I'm gonna yeah. be grateful for it. Yeah. So when it shows up, I can already acquire the lesson, Absolutely. I can already use it, Absolutely. right? To add value to every environment I go into and every person's life that I come in contact with. Yeah. Gratitude in advance, baby. Power, power, power! <laughs> my brother, my brother, my brother. Harlem, I appreciate baby. you, man. Harlem. Listen, when I tell y'all this is the greatest money mindset show on the planet, so we can only give you the greatest, and we got the greatest inspirational speaker on the planet. Uh, brother, I appreciate you, man. If somebody yeah. wanted to tap in, they wanted to connect with you, where can they find you? First and foremost, man, I want to say thank you, man. Thank you, brother. I appreciate you. Yes. I appreciate what you do. I appreciate your platform. You great. You excellent. You uh, you incredible, Thank right? You. But if anybody want to tap in with me, man, it's Inky Johnson, I N K Y J O H N S O N. I'm Inky Johnson. Motivate on Instagram because a cat stole my account. I'm still on you, man. I'm gonna find you so I can get my name back. But it's Inky Johnson. Inky Johnson. Motivate on Instagram. Yeah. All right, y'all. We closing the vault. I promise you, listen, please share this video with everybody you love. Make sure you share your story. You have overcome whatever you have went through because you have power. You have greatness. You are greatness on display. And you're supposed to use your story to motivate, to inspire, Sorry. to help save some lives. Whether it's speaking, whether it's writing a book, whether yeah. it is on your, on your job, whatever it is, people need to know that you have come through some stuff 
and that you are great, you are powerful, and somebody right now is waiting for you mm. to share your story. So make sure you share that story. I am Ash Cash. Thank y'all so much for tapping in, for tuning in. We are closing the vault. Make sure you follow us on all social media platforms at Inside the Vault. I am Ash Cash. Follow me on all social media platforms at I am Ash Cash. And I'm going to see y'all next time. Same time, same place. You know where we are. Inside the vault with Ash Cash, the greatest money mindset show on the planet. I'll see y'all next time in God's will. Peace. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You won't Ash Cash. You can catch it right here in the vault.